Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And a few days ago, I was talking about the news that Theresa May was wargaming possible outcomes if she offered up a public vote for her Brexit withdrawal agreement. And there was um and ah about whether that was because she was seriously considering it or was she was just doing it for some other political reasons. But it looks like she may be doing something again, playing some more political games because Ollie Robbins, who who is he's the civil servant that was used to accidentally leak some information earlier this year, is off to Brussels, or he was off to Brussels earlier today, I should say, for a meeting with EU officials. Now, he is the most senior civil servant involved in the Brexit negotiations. Um, now, the implication of his visit would be that Labour and the Conservative have come to at least some partial agreement, or that there's some movement at least, and that Mr. Robbins needs to ensure that the wider EU would approve of what's being agreed and, and to find out the details of how to do that change. Um, thing is that none of the people involved in the negotiations are pretending that there's anything to be dis discussed regarding the legally binding agreement. So it's entirely about the non-binding political declaration. Labour have been insisting upon a permanent customs union, uh, alignment of workers' rights with the EU and access to the single market in, in some form. So are we supposed to read into this that a major development has occurred and that the UK wants to clarify that the EU is OK with it in the process for changing the political declaration? Um, no, how could it be? We already knew that many Conservative MPs and certainly the wider membership don't want anything to do with an agreement that has been formed with the Labour Party. A number of MPs have even stepped up their opposition with a formal letter to the Prime Minister urging her to drop the talks altogether and noting that the party will never accept such a deal. That group of MPs includes Sir Graham Brady, who is the chair of the 1922 committee. That's the group that represents all Conservative MPs. Uh, a number of these Brexit supporting MPs are actually saying that they would rather we stayed in the EU than to leave with a deal that's agreed with Labour. Now, those statements are just from 13 Conservative MPs, which is not enough in itself to sink the deal, of course. But you'd have to think there's roughly the 80 members of the ERG that are hardly likely to get behind uh, what is essentially going to be billed as a Labour version of Brexit. And especially as they voted against the deal. I mean, it's a, that would represent a soft Brexit than the one they've already been voting against several times. And it may even be that MPs who had previously voted in favour of the agreement would then withdraw that support uh, if, as I say, it looked essentially like a Labour version of Brexit. And from Labour's point of view, there's also little appetite within the parliamentary party to vote in favour of any deal whatsoever, even if they gave in to all of Corbyn's demands, which they wouldn't, without a public vote. That's what Labour MPs want. So the numbers would still not be there in Parliament. So why has Theresa May sent Ollie Robbins off to Brussels to discuss what is being described as changes to the political declaration? I mean, that heavily suggests that May and Corbyn's teams have agreed on something, doesn't it? The meeting between Robbins and his counterpart, the, Defu the deputy chief negotiator on the part of the EU, is to, they said, the reports say, to ascertain how long would it take to change the agreement uh, for the political declaration? Now, I suppose it could be just for information in the event that a sudden agreement is made. It certainly doesn't prove that there has been any meeting of minds, especially as we keep hearing Labour members of the negotiating team, John McDonnell most notably, saying that no progress has been made whatsoever. Uh, there's been no movement. Of course, we can never take anything reported about private negotiations as read unless both sides agree with the version of events. But the EU have been saying that they think it'll take a few days to put a soft Brexit plan in place. But that would require a clear plan on the part of the UK in order to achieve it. Now, given that May's entire strategy has been as vague as possible with regards to the agreement, and that although Corbyn has been clearer about what he wants, there are still aspects of his plan that lack detail. For example, what does he think alignment with the single market actually means? So the idea that the Conservatives and Labour would agree a clear Brexit plan seems to me to be ludicrous. The thing about clear plans is they're unambiguous. Everyone can see exactly what is going to happen. There's no need for interpretation and Brexit interpretations vary wildly because the interpretations have already been made and explained in crystal clear language. That's what being clear means. 
Now, we can believe that both of them, May and Corbyn, are desperate to make Brexit happen. So the motivation for a deal is probably quite high. Corbyn wants it because he is a Brexit supporter, albeit not openly these days. And May wants it possibly because she believes it's the only thing that can save her precious party. But neither of them has the support of the majority of their MPs over the issue. Normally, that's not a major issue because enough MPs will obey the whip and vote in favour of the leader's direction. But on this issue, there is widespread refusal to toe the party line on both sides. Theresa May has a double problem, resulting from her impending retirement or removal from power, depending on whether she goes voluntary or not. Um, one is that even ordinarily loyal MPs won't necessarily follow her line if it means upsetting, for example, her soon-to-be successor, whoever that may be. Um, they're also going to be mindful of the strong feelings amongst the party membership and the general population in the risks of supporting a lame duck prime minister who can do nothing for them in a couple of months' time, in all likelihood. The second problem is that Labour also can't trust that the Conservatives will feel bound by any agreement they make with Theresa May once she has left office. In many ways, I can't really understand why Brexit-supporting Conservative MPs are so upset about the changes to the political declaration because they can just tear them up when someone else becomes Prime Minister. In fact, Jacob Rees-Mogg was talking about tearing up even the legally binding agreement. That's, why, that's the excuse he gave for voting in favour of the agreement last time. He said, well, we can just tear it up later. And he was talking about the legally binding agreement. So how little respect do you think these people will show for the non-binding agreement? So it may be that Robin's trip to Brussels is just another little tester for May to gauge opinion, maybe, on what would happen if a deal were to be arranged. A little bit like, as I say, the war gaming on the idea of the public vote that I discussed. I certainly don't believe that there is any agreement between the parties. I mean, if there were, why would John McDonnell be so vehemently saying that there has not actually been any movement indeed? Um, apart from anything else... I can't really work out why he would have, why Ollie Robbins would have to go to Brussels for this. I mean, you can sort of go there and say, oh, how long would it take to change the political declaration? And I can imagine the conversation going, well, what changes do you want? To which he would have to reply, don't know, because they haven't been agreed. <laughs> you know, without those going along with those specific changes that the UK wants, how can a face to face meeting really come up with a an answer about how long it would take. So their response that they've already given before today anyway, saying will probably take a few days, um, that's that's as good as you're going to get. Why does he need to go there? So I think the reason he's been sent there is to get media attention, uh, to suggest that there's some movement maybe when there really isn't at all. And I think she's basically got Ollie and Robbins to carry out another little deception for some purpose or other, but quite what I think it does for her, I, I can't imagine. Um, but anyway, uh, that's it. I, I don't think there's going to be anything in it. Let me know what you think, of course, in the comments below. Uh, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content, particularly if you want to be kept up to date with the real Brexit news. And until next time, I'll see you later.